DF-21D and DF-26. Let's start with the so-called carrier killers, DF-21D and DF-26. They don't cruise, they drop from way up, like bowling balls that learn steering. The scary part isn't the missile, it's the kill chain. Space eyes spot you, long-range radars nudge the math, data links whisper mid-course updates, and a terminal seeker does the handshake. Break a link, party's over. Mid-flight, they ride an arc. Terminal, the Marv noses down in plasma, juking hard. Defenders stack SAMs, ECM, and decoys. Missiles answer with speed, weird angles, and either hit to kill or a loud conventional slap. Range? Hundreds to thousands of kilometers. Your fleet is in check before you smell salt. Here's the boring truth. These are terrifying when the chain is perfect and pretty average when it isn't. Clouds fog seekers, sea clutter lies, spoofers feed stale cowards, and ships don't wait for updates. Salvos help, better space eyes help more. Magic? No, just a fast problem with a long spreadsheet. Call it gravity with a steering wheel and a deadline. Now imagine the next thing, leaner, air breathing, lower flying, shorter legs than these brutes, but nastier to stop in the last five miles. 3M22 Zircon. Okay, the loud show off. Zircon. Not a falling hammer, a screaming dart. Air breathing scramjet rides oxygen like it stole it. Climbs to speed, then skims the sea where radar notices late. And crews discover their coffee is now anxiety. Why it scares me? Time compression. At hypersonic, your decision loop shrinks from minutes to did you blink? Nose wrapped in plasma, sensors sweating, but still good enough to find a big metal boat. It zigzags down low. Defenses have seconds. Downsides? Oh yes. Hypersonic is a diva. Heat cooks sensors, plasma messes with comms, and fancy fuel logistics make quartermasters cry. Targeting still needs the same kill chain gospel. Space eyes, data links, timing. Miss that, and you just bullied the horizon. Compared to those ballistic brutes, shorter reach, way lower flight path, nastier in the last miles. Less gravity, more knife fight. If ASBMs are sledgehammers, this is a scalpel thrown at mock rude. Next guest, slower, heavier punch, loves big salvos. Built for mass production and migraines. YJ-12. China's YJ-12, aka the flying sledgehammer I won't shut up about. Zero elegance, all attitude. You chuck it off an H6 or a fighter, the booster shoves, the ramjet takes over, and boom, now it's skimming a few meters above the waves. Low, loud, late on radar. Big ship? Delicious. Big warhead? Even better. The recipe is caveman simple. Launch far, send a salvo, make the defender play whack-a-mole with missiles. What it feels like on the bridge? Someone yells, supersonic inbound and every screen starts singing. In the last stretch, it can jink, do a quick pop-up, then slap the deck at a nasty angle. Reaction time? Seconds, not stories. Now the flaws, because I love those too. It's a big, hot target. If your layers are awake, ECM, decoys, SAM, SIWIS, you steal kills, especially when it comes alone. It also needs friends in the sky. Targeting updates, clean timing, decent weather. Compared to Zircon, slower, simpler, easier to feed. Compared to the Ballistic Boys, less reach, way more flexible, and cheap enough to buy anxiety in bulk. Imagine the next troublemaker. Shore-based, stubborn, cliff-hugging. Similar top speed, shorter legs. Born to ambush from the coast. P-800 Onyx, Onyx. Russia's coastal bully with a concrete gym membership. Fired from bastion trucks hiding behind cliffs, it sprints off the beach like it owns the shoreline. Booster kicks, ramjet lights, and now it's carving a low salty path. Supersonic and grumpy. Pick your attitude. High low profile for reach or pure sea skimming for surprise. Either way, the warhead isn't here to negotiate. Targeting is old school but works. Shore radars, spotters, maybe a drone. Mid-course rides inertia with gentle nudges. Terminal seeker wakes up pops up for a peek, or just snakes in low. Defenders hate geography, coastal clutter, short timelines, awkward radar angles. Layered SAMs and CWES still help, but you'd better be on beat. Weak spots? Loud, hot, not stealthy. Needs eyes that see past the horizon, and bastion launchers leave footprints you can hunt. Alone? Manageable. In pairs or fours, it gets impolite fast. Compared to our last sledgehammer from the air, this one's tougher, more rugged, a bit shorter-legged, less flexible, more stubborn. Burn. Ambush specialist. Imagine the sequel. Same DNA, cleaner suit, export friendly, smarter seeker, tighter playbook, rides ships, hugs coasts, and even flies. Same punch, sharper manners. Bravos. Onyx's cousin who went to finishing school and came back with manners and a tan. India plus Russia built it to smack ships fast. From shore, ship, sub, 
Even a Sukhoi dropping the A version. Booster punts it off pad, ramjet lights. It sprints at Mach 3. No elegance awards. Reliable pain. Flight profile? High low for reach or pure sea skimming to be rude. Terminal it can pop up. Peak then dive like a bowling ball with GPS. Warheads chunky, think steel surgery. Crews love it because it works. Planners love it because you can salvo it and mix launch platforms. Geography plus speed equals, why is our timeline screaming? But it's not magic. It's loud, hot, and not stealthy. It still needs the kill chain to point it, and it's heavier than your average cruise toy. So range isn't infinite. ECM and layered defenses can swat singles. Salvos are the honest threat. Compared to that coastal bruiser earlier, cleaner seeker, better export manners, similar top speed, a bit tighter playbook. Industrial discipline meets supersonic smack. Now picture a trickster, long legs, quiet crews, then a last second sprint that steals your lunch. 3M54 caliber. Meet the trickster I teased. 3M54 caliber, the sizzler. It cruises like a polite tourist, then rips its suit off and sprints like it stole a jet. Ship or sub fires it. A booster shoves, the little turbojet hums along low over the water. Calm, boring, that's the trap. While it creeps in, the kill chain feeds waypoints. Then, showtime. The front section separates, a solid rocket lights, and a skinny dart goes supersonic. Quick pop-up to peek over waves, hard dive to the hull. Your radar saw a slow visitor. Now it's a sprinter at the door. Closure rate explodes. Fire control math panics, and seconds disappear. Weakness check? The cruise phase is subsonic, so time is also working against it. More chances to be spotted, jammed, or outmaneuvered. Warheads smaller than the big rammers, and not every caliber is the sprinty anti-ship type. Plenty are land attack cousins. Salvos fix at Attitude. Singles can be managed. Versus Brahmos, sneakier, trickier, lighter punch. Versus the Loud Boys, slower most of the way, nastier at the buzzer. Now imagine something slower, stealthier, brainier, hates radars, loves silence, and hunts like a patient shark. AGM 158C. LRASM is the nerd, and the nerd wins. Subsonic, low observable, painfully smart. No mock flexing, just quiet menace. You toss it from a B1B or FA-18, it drops to sea skimming, kills its lights, and hunts emissions like a polite stalker. GPS INS to get close, then it ghosts up. Passive sensors, ATR to recognize ships, and a brain that ignores decoys and bullies the most expensive hull. I'm obsessed. Defenders hate silence. With no big radar glow, detection is late, classification is worse, and the first hello is a splash near the waterline. Warhead? About a thousand pounds. No poetry, just carpentry. They can network too, share targets, divide tasks, and not need babysitting. That's not Hollywood missile duel. That's intruder in the house at 3 a.m. Compared to Zircon YJ-12, Slower, yes. Also calmer, stealthier, and meaner in clutter. Compared to Onyx Brahmos, less raw speed, way more discretion. Compared to Sizzler, fewer theatrics, more brains at the buzzer. It kills with thinking, not velocity. Now feel the mood shift. Higher altitude, much faster. Big belly explosive, vintage attitude on steroids. Coming down from the sky like an angry truck. KH-32. KH-32 is the glow-up of a Cold War diva. Big body, bigger attitude. Launched from a Tu-22M3 bomber, it doesn't sneak. It climbs. Way up. High supersonic cruise over the weather, then a mean steep dive that feels like someone dropped a telephone pole from the stratosphere. Old recipe, sharper spices, better seeker, tougher against jamming, and a warhead that speaks fluent deck rearrangement. How it fights? Get cues from the kill chain, sprint high where drag is low, then tip over and plunge. That top-down geometry hurts. Radars look sideways, not straight up. On the way down, it can adjust course, then aim for the fat parts. Island, hangar, waterline. Defenses try long-range SAMs while it's high, then sea whiz when it dives. Pick your poison. Early, far, and hard. Or late, close, and harder. Reality check, not stealthy. Very toasty on radar up high, and the bomber has to get within throwing distance of grown-up air defenses. But if the shot is set, this is a freight truck with almost hypersonic manners. Compared to LRASM, way louder, way faster, Far dumber looking, also brutally vertical. Now picture a slimmer hunter. Small signature, sea hugging, terrain skimming, surgical brain. Less boom, more finesse. Naval Strike Missile. NSM, Norway's whispering troublemaker. 
Trade speed for brains and a hoodie. Subsonic, low observable composites, hugging waves and coastline like it dodges rent. No active radar. It refuses to shout. It creeps in. Then an imaging infrared seeker does face ID. Heat picture, model match, aim point, pick. Rude engineering. Mid-course is chill. GPS INS, smart waypoints, chosen attack azimuths. It can arc around islands and sneak through fjords like it grew up there. Terminal is petty. Sea skim, weave, pick the pricey bits. Bridge, island, waterline and thread the last meters. Decoys? Chaff is useless. Flares work only if your ship pretends to be the sun. With no radar spikes, defenders see it late and argue longer. Weaknesses? Not fast, modest warhead. Weather can smudge the thermal view. It wins by staying quiet and hitting where accountants cry. Versus KH-32. Slower, stealthier, smarter, less hammer from heaven, more scalpel at your ankles. Strap in. Older legend, many headlines. Upgraded seeker, loves coastal clutter. Still bites when you roll your eyes. Exocet MM40 Block 3C. The comeback kid with a new brain. Same famous silhouette, but the nose got smarter. A coherent J-band active RF seeker that shrugs at modern jamming and picks real ships out of the noise. Old name, new attitude. Over the horizon tasking in, seeker on, ship regrets. Mid-course is grown-up stuff. Hybrid INS GNSS, 3D waypoints, digital radio altimeter, even a coordinate land attack mode if you want to bully a pier instead of a hull. In terminal, it hugs the chop, adapts its search, and threads for high-value aim points. Salvos can time their punches together so your defenses flinch once, not twice. That's rude by design. Range sits in the 200-plus kilometer club. Call it the long arm of petty revenge. Not hypersonic, not stealth royalty. Just a reliable subsonic finisher with better ears and thicker skin. That's the point. Availability plus ECCM plus planning beats headline speed more often than Twitter admits. Compared to NSM, louder, less sneaky, bigger punch. Compared to the vintage exosets you know from grainy documentaries, meaner brain, better filtering, and way less easy to spoof. Faster killers exist. Smarter ones are the real tax on your command system. Final thought, oceans don't care about hype. Sensors, salvos, and timing decide who gets the punchline. See the next video. F-35 Lightning II, the flying smartphone with a jet problem. Sensor fusion, stealth, and a subscription to headaches. Three flavors, A, B, C. If you've watched this far, don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, and tell me which of these missiles would cause the most damage with the most style.